too. And Eddie, now we got to ask you too. How is uh, how's Tony Ferguson now? He's uh, fighting uh, Anthony Pettis. Was it, is it two twenty? He's on uh, Connor. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, Khabib. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is the co-main. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he's healing up. Okay. Fuck, he's healing up incredibly. You know, um, he's doing everything possible for his rehab he's he's got his own gym now and, and his, he's got all this equipment like red light therapy um compression like leg sleeve uh, things and you know um some kind of uh, like he's got all this this therapy he's doing um constant like you know massages and and um and you know everybody knows he's a um, cardio machine he's working He's um he's he's working so hard every day. He's already just he's in the best shape of his life right now. He uh, he was never an alcoholic or anything like that, but you know he decided to quit drinking once and for all. You know, and um, he's uh, it, it, that injury really made him reevaluate. You know how he was living his life and um, how he you know he was already training like a bad motherfucker anyways, and and now it's even more intense. So. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see uh, the best Tony ever against Pettis. Eddie, let me ask you as a as a jujitsu master, if you were to work with Conor McGregor for his fight versus Khabib, what would you what would you do? I mean, I mean, is he could he master the rubber guard in fucking eight weeks? What would you? How would how is he gonna survive down there? I mean, listen, I, having I, if he doesn't I, knock him out initially, of course, people are saying that, but yeah, tell me um, your thoughts on that. Um, you know, uh, if I, if I had, you know, three, four months to train him, um, I'd be, I would definitely add rubber guard to his game. Would it be enough at that point? I don't know. Uh, but I would add a lot of other stuff too. We would be working, you know, guard retention, guard recovery, side control escape, back escape, mount escape over and over every day, side control escape, guard recovery, guard retention. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I think the mistake people are making with Khabib, the biggest mistake is when they get taken down, um, they're trying to get back up. I, yeah. it, it, getting back up is not going to work against Khabib. He's, that, that's where he shines. He shines in riding people that are trying to get back up. R remember, you remember that movie, The Warriors? Of course. Sure. Remember when they were running from the baseball furies? Ajax <laughs> and that other guy were running, and the baseball furies were tra chasing him through the park. Remember that? Of yep. course. And they were running. And then... Um, they uh, Ajax and that guy decided to stop. They're like, "Fuck this running! Let's stop! Let's just stop and beat these these pussies up!" Yeah. Right? Remember that? Yeah. They stop. I think you know if when Tony fights Khabib, he's not going to be trying to drag himself up from the fence. He's going to square up and fight him off his back. Yeah. Not spend the whole goddamn round trying to get up and getting beat down. That shit ain't going to work against Khabib. He wants you to do that shit. So he hasn't had anybody with a high level guard square up with him and fight him and go after mm. him for off his back. You know what I mean? Attack him off his back, not trying to drag themselves away and trying to climb up the fence and just drag themselves and turning and trying to stand up. That shit will never work. That's just going to lose you rounds. So, you know, I'm not saying that my strategy will work, but we already know that other strategy is, is not going to work. So with Tony, we're constantly preparing to, you know, if he ends up on his back to attack, and I don't think no one's throwing any heat at Khabib off their back. They're just trying to survive and trying to get back up. So that's that's the approach we're going to take with Khabib. So when guys are and when Khabib elbows, you know what I mean. Throw elbows. Put them in full guard. Constant. Don't try to drag yourself away. Try to focus on putting them in full guard and throwing elbows. Recover. Throw elbows. Recover. Throw elbows. Recover. Throw elbows. Cut them up instead of trying to drag yourself away like a zombie. So do you? So you think when guys have been taken down uh, by Khabib, they're almost thinking, okay, this is the nightmare I was worried about. Just try to get out of it instead of addressing it uh, head on. Exactly. They're, they're all trying to drag themselves away. And he just rides them, rides those wrists. And, and if they do get back on their feet, he's just going to bring them back down again. He's really good against the fence, standing against the fence. Khabib is amazing standing against the fence. Whether, um, whether he came from, you know, being just like a, a kickboxing situation and then clinching against the fence, you're fucked. Or he took you down and you got up and you're against the fence. Same scenario, he'll just retake you down. And, and that's just, you're just going to lose rounds until you finally get TKO'd. 
So what do you see happening with him and Connor? Again, I know there's no... Predi- I, mean, I think Connor has a shot in the first because Khabib is known to take punches. But I mean, a- a- as soon as Khabib gets him against the fence or is able to take him down, I think Connor's in a lot of trouble. Do you, th- do you think he has a shot early in that round? Um, I think Connor's only shot is with his fist. You know, no doubt he's probably, the, you know, the most powerful puncher pound for pound. Uh, maybe, you know, ever in the UFC. He's definitely in the conversation. But that does not, uh, punching power does not translate at all to guard work. Right. So, um, you know, look at what Ro- Rafael Dos Anjos, that's a legit black belt. He, his guard wasn't good enough for Khabib. Uh, Edson Barbosa's guard wasn't good enough. Um, you know, uh, nobody's guard is good enough for Khabib. You know, and they're all trying to get back up. They're all spending the whole round trying to get back up instead of just staying there and attacking him and, you know, uh, going with the attitude, like thank him for taking, you know, for taking him down, you know, um, uh, who knows if that strategy would work either because no one's really tried it, but we know the other strategy is not working. Yeah, so you might as well try something new. And, and how do you think of, uh, you know, Gaslam is fighting Whitaker for the uh, middleweight title. Uh, what do you think of that fight? Well, you know, Gaslam's my boy, so... Sure. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be a one hell of a fight, you know. But uh, you know, uh, hopefully it goes Gastelum's way, and he he definitely has what it takes to uh, to beat Whitaker. But you know, make no mistake about it, you know, n- nobody is uh, guaranteeing any kind of win in, in that fight. You know, that that caliber of a fight, uh, Whitaker is uh, you know top of the food chain, super crazy dangerous tough as shit, you know, so it's going to be an amazing fight. Now, we've talked to you a lot about fighting, but I want to ask you, what do you play? I didn't even realize you were a musician. If I did realize that, I didn't remember because my memory stinks. I knew that. Yeah, I, I, I produce music, been producing music my whole life. Um, I got a, an album on uh, YouTube for free. I don't, you know, no one wants to buy my music, but uh, <laughs> the album's called Mix Flick of death and devotion. You can uh, find it on YouTube. It's 15 of my uh, songs that I produced uh, cut to my favorite movies of all time. So I made music videos out of um, Scarface, Memento, Fear and Loathing uh, in Las Vegas, uh, Moon, The Shining, Enter the Dragon, The Crow. So uh, that's why it's called Mix Flick. So it's like a mixtape, but it's a mix flick. So you could could catch that on YouTube. So are you playing in these uh, bands or are you just producing? I play, produce, arrange, you know. Do you um, sing? That's a guitar. A, a little bit, a little bit. You do you the know, guitar. I'm, I'm very limited uh, with my vocals, so, you know, I, I, I stay in the background, and if there's a line or two that I could pull off, you know, I'll just, I'll just add a little, I'll sprinkle myself in, but I got, uh, I, I'm dealing, you know, I'm working with super high-level vocalists and, and uh, rappers, too, because I produce hip-hop as well, so the, my MCs are just high, as high levels you can get, and the, the singers that I work with are, you know, just classically trained, uh, amazing Sarah McLaughlin uh, level vocalist. So, you know, I, I stay in the background. Well, that's great, man. Listen, um, what, t- tell me, when does this tournament start and how can people see this? Which one? Uh, the quintet. Quintet is the day before uh, Khabib Connor. versus yeah. Connor. It's Ar- in Vegas, so if you're coming out to Vegas Friday, you check out Quintet. It'll be 10th Planet versus uh, Sakuraba's team, who uh, Josh Barnett's on Sakuraba's team. Uh, uh, Uriah Faber's got a team, and uh, the Polaris team, who won the first Quintet. Those guys are fucking, that's going to be the, the toughest uh, team out there to, to beat for us. You know, they got Craig Jones, and Craig Jones is, is uh, one of the best grapplers in the world right now, and uh, he, he crushed that first uh, quintet. So it's going to be crazy. That's Friday. Then Saturday's the UFC. It's all in Vegas. Um, EBI 17 is going to be September 29th. It's before that. It's going to be at Muscle Farm HQ in Burbank. And that's going to be the first ever 16 man combat jujitsu tournament. So that's going to be fucking nuts. Jesse Taylor from the UFC. He's in it. He's expected to win it all. Um, three time black belt, no gi champion, uh, um, Felipe Fogolin. He's also in it. He's a favorite. Um, we got, you know, my guys from 10th Planet, you know, John Thor Blank, he's a, uh, man, he's he's a rising star in the 10th Planet world. Um, I expect him to do damage. Kyle Chambers is also one of my guys from 10th uh, Planet. He's a, a leg lock machine. So it, it's going to be fucking nuts. Also, um, uh, uh, Josh Neer, UFC veteran, is oh. also jumping in. Tamden McQuarrie, uh, also another UFC veteran, is in it. Most of the, uh, ninety nine point nine percent of all the combat jiu jitsu guys stepping up. They they all have MMA experience. 
pure jujitsu guys are not stepping up at all unless they're 10th planet guys because i got a bunch of 10th planet pure jujitsu guys who, who are trying to get into combat jujitsu but most of uh the the traditional bjj world they think combat jujitsu is too gangster but mma fighters they're thinking oh my god this is easy it's just, it's just palm strikes <laughs> and <laughs> this is crazy. and this can be seen uh, on MMA fight fighters think it's, it, mma fighters think it's pussy uh MMA and uh, jujitsu fighters think think it's extreme gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think it, I think it keeps you honest. And uh, yeah. those guys that are just doing any technique and, and not worried about getting punched in the face, at least they'll get a nice smack or palm strike and be like, okay, I got to yeah, yeah. I got to create some distance with my legs now and stuff. So yeah, I like I it. It keeps your jiu-jitsu a, a little more honest. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And it directs it more towards the MMA arena, you know, which is, which, which is in the direction of uh, realistic street altercations. You know what I'm saying? And you can so, watch it on Fight Pass. It is available on Fight Pass to watch if you can't. Yes, it'll days. be on Fight Pass as well. All right, Eddie. Thank you, man. And uh, it's always good. You know, I don't know. Have we had you on before? I know I've talked to you. I've done Joe's podcast with you. But I don't know if we've actually had you on this show. No, he's never been on. No, I don't think so. Well, don't it's think good so, talking to thank you. Thank you very much. Eddie, you know, if you ever visit... Thank you. Eddie, you there still? Yeah. I'm okay. Here. Listen, if you're ever in New York, man, and you want to bang out a seminar, you let me know, dude. I'd love to have you at my place. Oh, you're in Long Island still, right? I'm in Strong Island, dude. Oh, We'd shit. love to cool. share some rubber guard with us. Uh, thank you, man. <laughs> I'll take you up on that for sure. Later, Eddie. See you later, man. Take thank care. You. Take it easy. See Bye. You. The great Eddie Bravo. Yeah, Eddie's fun. Eddie's, Eddie's a good dude, man. I'm going to pee. Him. I got to go pee pee too.